the representative of the United Kingdom, the last of the co-hosts of today's meeting. Ambassador, you have the floor. Well, thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Uh, and let me begin by stating that the United Kingdom is a long-standing friend and partner of Cameroon. We work closely together to tackle the devastating situation in the Lake Chad Basin, where Cameroon is a key part of regional efforts to tackle the threat from Boko Haram and IS West Africa. And Under Secretary General Mark Lowcock reminded us earlier of the generosity of Cameroon towards refugees, not only from the Lake Chad Basin, but also from the Central African Republic. But Madam Chair, the United Kingdom is nevertheless deeply concerned about the deteriorating situation in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. There have been over 1,000 mainly civilian deaths since 2016, with over 520,000 internally displaced persons from the region and 32,500 registered refugees in Nigeria. The trajectory of the need is most worrying, as Mark Lowcock said, from 160,000 last year to 1.3 million this with its disproportionate impact on children. Our Cameroonians' briefer's uh, testimony about the impact on the ground was so very powerful, and I thank you. And I also salute your bravery in coming here and speaking for your communities uh, and also for compassion, and thank you for that. As we've heard today, humanitarian access is key, which is a challenge due to ongoing fighting checkpoints and attacks on infrastructure. Armed actors on all sides have targeted national and international aid workers, curbing humanitarian work in crisis-affected areas. Health facilities have also been actively targeted. This must stop. International humanitarian law must be respected. And we must also find ways to allow education to take place, as Jan Egelin told us. We believe that senior UN officials need to maintain a visible presence in southwest and northwest regions of Cameroon to help negotiate that humanitarian space. Because there is a worrying mistrust of the aid effort on both sides, including in the Anglophone communities. Humanitarian organizations, especially from the United Nations, are often accused of supporting the government of Cameroon, while security forces and the authorities restrict movement of humanitarian workers and aid for fear of aid reaching the hands of separatists. The United Kingdom urges all parties to respect and engage in an ongoing dialogue with the humanitarian community to ensure that aid workers are able to respond in a principled and safe way. The bottom line is that those in need must be reached and no one must stop that for political reasons. The United Kingdom recently gave uh, $3.25 million to the United Nations response which will provide some assistance for people in the northwest and southwest regions. But I heard very clearly what Mark Lowcock had to say about the overall need, and we will reflect on that, and I encourage others to do so as well. Future coordination efforts between the UN agencies, funds and programs, humanitarian actors and civil society, including local humanitarian partners on the ground, should focus on a realistic plan to increase the reach of the response, including agreeing on joint approaches between the United Nations and the government of Cameroon to increase humanitarian access in rural areas. But Madam Co-Chair, this is a man-made humanitarian crisis, a crisis caused by people, not by nature, and that requires people to act to resolve it. We cannot talk about the humanitarian situation in isolation. We have to also talk about the political situation which underpins it. And a number of council members, including the United Kingdom, have been highlighting for a while that there is a real risk of a long-term intractable conflict developing if it is not addressed soon. And I, at this point, remember particular uh, Father uh, Njo King Kang's words about the need for political resolution. We all want to ensure that this is avoided, this intractable conflict is avoided, not only to stop the violence uh, described by our briefers today, but also for the sake of the region and the sub-region given Cameroon's critical position on the continent, tackling challenges in the Lake Chad Basin and Car, as I mentioned earlier. Now, Madam Co-Chair, the government of Cameroon has made a number of promises and proposals to resolve the underlying problems. And President Beer recently promulgated a new decentralization law paving the way for regional elections. This is a very welcome step. But we need to see greater implementation of the government of Cameroon's own proposals 
and greater trust building with local populations. And the United Kingdom calls on the government of Cameroon to establish a credible political dialogue and make all efforts to resolve the crisis peacefully. Confidence building measures need to be taken to create the conditions for such a dialogue, for example, through release of political detainees and taking steps to rebuild the political center. The United Kingdom stands ready to assist as a partner and in partnership with African countries and institutions. And we believe that uh, our, uh, Cameroon's neighbors, uh, the African Union, and of course, that uh, UNOCA have a role to play. And I also want at this point to highlight the role of the Peace Building Support Office and to call for them to provide rapid help in responding to the government of Cameroon's request to them for assistance in the effective delivery of its own policies. Madam Co-Chair, an increase in access, an increase in funding, it's a vital first step, but it will only lead to a short-term improvement in the situation. We still have time to prevent this crisis from descending further into an intractable conflict, but that time is limited and we cannot waste it. So I reiterate the urgent need for the government of Cameroon to act now, to instigate a credible dialogue, to tackle the situation and address the ever worsening humanitarian crisis. Else I fear that the council will find itself discussing this issue more often. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Thank you.